All right, so we're going to talk about quizzes today. Let's go ahead and get into it. With quizzes, there's many different ways that you can create quizzes and quiz questions. You can even create question banks. And then from there, you can pull in and create new quizzes real easily. Today, I won't go into detail of creating question banks. We're going to focus more on just how to create and set up your quiz. Uh, and one of the nice things is that for the majority of these quizzes, you're going to be able to have Canvas automatically grade them for the majority of them. I think there's only two types that it, it sorry, I'm, I might be getting a little bit confused with assignments and quizzes. But yes, we're, we're going to look at quizzes and the different types of quiz questions that you can include in a quiz. So as with assignments, there's multiple places to create a quiz. So in our example, um, we're going to walk it walk you through first by going to the the quiz menu okay this could be done from within the module as well but we'll we'll do it from that view first just um because most of the directions inside of campus are from from that perspective so you're going to go to quizzes and then you're going to click on the plus quiz button that you see here and that's going to allow you to go ahead and name your quiz and create a set of directions using the quiz, the rich content editor. Again, um, pay close attention to how you name the quizzes because these can be re reused. So if you want to design your own naming convention to help you better search through all of that later, then perfect, right? Like unit one quiz, and then maybe the, the topic of what it is. The students will not, I don't believe they see the full quiz name like that. Um, I, let's, let's give this a shot though. Let's go in and, and do that and, and find out for sure, for sure. Let me hide this. Okay, so from the course menu, I'm gonna click on quizzes. And I do have a couple of quizzes there. So I'm going to click plus quiz to make a brand new one. Um, I didn't know this was going to come up. Canvas has two quiz engines. Please choose which one you'd like to use. I think our training went through classic quizzes for the time being. If you mm -hmm. need security. From That's brand new. Quiz. OK, so someone must have turned this on. I haven't done the training for new quizzes yet. So we'll have to play on our own later with that. Let's do classic, oldie but goodie, classic. So again, I'm just naming my quiz. So I'll be real generic and say quiz one, yeah. The rich content editor comes up. So these are where I can put in my instructions as we've done before. Let me go back in and, uh, oop, that's the wrong one. I'm gonna get confused and I'm gonna move that over. Okay, let me go through and make sure I'm doing everything right. Quiz setup, named it, put in my directions, great. Next, we're choosing the quiz type. Let's go in there and choose the quiz type. So I have practice quiz, graded quiz, graded survey, ungraded survey. Practice quiz, meaning there's there's not going to be a grade sent into the grade book. No, no grade, right? I just want to see what they know. Graded quiz, probably mostly what we think of. Graded survey. Um, Jenna, do you remember why you would do a graded survey? I'm trying to rem I don't remember going over that. Okay. I'm trying to remember why we said graded survey. Uh, oh, maybe if it's like, I remember. It could be like a pre-quiz. So you're not trying to find out, you know, like the grade's not gonna be detrimental to their grade, but. Um, I've, I've got something on the community. A graded survey allows the instructor to give students points for completing the survey, right. but it does not allow the survey to be graded for right or wrong answers. Correct. Right, so I can give everybody 100 for taking the quiz. And uh, if they miss- Like formative assessment feedback. Right. Like no harm, no foul, this is where we are at. Yeah, diagnostic. And then ungraded survey, just y'all know that one. 
So I'm gonna go with great, graded survey. I mean, sorry, graded quiz. Okay, so let's oh, take a look. Sorry. Not... Assignment group, this is gonna go into my assessments. And then I have some additional options here. Do I wanna shuffle the answers? This is just the A, B, C, D parts, mixing those up. I say, sure, that, that sounds good. Time limit, something we didn't have before. I want only my students to have only up to 30 minutes to take this assessment. Do I want to allow multiple attempts, yes or no? I like that idea, I'll put it on. Quiz score to keep the highest, the most recent one, or an average of all of them. I think this one's cool. I don't know how y'all feel, but I, I like the idea of the average. If you're super nice, I guess you could go with the highest one or the most recent one. The most recent one's kind of scary because they could go in and, and get a lower score, but I guess if you allow multiple attempts, they can go back in and redo it. And then how many allowed attempts? So it's very detailed, right? Like I can say you have two attempts and that's it. It's gonna average the both of them. Then we have some more options right here. Let me make sure that I'm, I'm showing you the right amount of slides before we do a um, try it out on your own. Let's see, let's see. Oh, yep, let students see their quiz response. Okay, good. So let's talk about that. Do I want the students to see their quiz responses? It says incorrect questions will be marked in the student feedback. Totally up to you. If you do, it's saying only after their last attempt, only once after each attempt. Do you want to let students see their correct answers? I'm gonna say no to that one, but notice you can say only after the last attempt or show correct answers at a specific date, hide correct answers at a specific date. So you just have a lot of control over how you provide that feedback and show students the correct answers, incorrect answers, all that. I'm gonna hide that for now. I'm just not even gonna let them see the correct answers. I'm being mean, I guess. Do I want to show them one question at a time? I honestly think this would be a good way of, of maybe getting rid of uh, alleviating a little bit of test anxiety, or maybe for younger students, or as a, um, you know, one way to just make the, te the, the test just easier to manage for our students. So one, one question at a time. Do I wanna lock the questions after answering? Okay, and what else do we have? We have require an access code. That would mean, you know, I'm gonna create a password for them to, to get into the quiz. That's kind of fun. Filter IP address. Um, they didn't talk to us too much about this training, but what I know is that you could turn this on and what colleges, like colleges use this to say, that they put in a specific IP address to make it so that a student has to take it while they're at the university. So I think with, with remote learning, this doesn't make sense. So I would just leave that off. And then who are you assigning this to? And with due dates available from until, just like we did with the assignments, all right? So we're reaching a pause reflect. You will do the, what we just, Demonstrate it by going to quiz, click plus quiz. Be sure to name it. Uh, I'm not too, too worried about directions, but if you want to include a couple there, that's fine. What I am mostly concerned about is that you go through and try doing a graded quiz with the assignment group and then experiment with the settings. Choose a due date. I do see a note here saying do not save yet. Do not save it yet because we've only done just the settings of our quiz. Notice there's the questions up here, so we'll do that in the second part, okay? Setting the timer, three minutes. Have at it, y'all.
Right, just as a quick reminder, don't save it just yet because we still have to add in our questions. We've only done the settings part. There's about one minute left. What are y'all's thoughts on the passcode? What, why do you think we, uh, the benefit of, of using that? I see Connor asking that. What, what do y'all think? Yeah, maybe something with cheating, right? Like maybe I create one password for a section and then maybe a different password for a section. I don't know. Uh, I just got a text too that says Canvas wants to know about anything involving being hacked because they've the text says they've been receiving hacking awards for no infiltration so i don't know we're gonna find out about that andrea are you able to change the password for different sections you know i don't know maybe not you may have to set up one quiz and then duplicate it and have a different access code. So I guess you could, but it seems like an extra step in doing so. I guess with uh, maybe the access code, maybe you could at least see what the directions are for the quiz, but you may not be able to get in and take the quiz until you have that access code. This feature can be used to make stu sure students are taking the quiz at a specific time or in a certain location. This works as, ah, especially well for students who need to take the test in the testing center or with the proctor. The setting can also be used if students have started taking an untimed quiz in class and don't have, so that makes sense. Thanks for looking that up. All right, so let's go ahead and continue to the next part, which is making all of our questions. So let me get back into the presentation. Y'all go ahead and come back into the Zoom window. Okay, so now that we've created the initial part of that quiz, we have to go in and create these questions. We're gonna talk about how to create the different types of quiz questions. There's multiple choice, true, false, false et cetera. We're gonna talk about the answer choices, how to indicate which ones are correct and incorrect. And then we're also gonna include how to provide immediate feedback options for your students. If you wanna learn more about quizzes, be sure to click this link here that'll go into a video, uh, uh, like a quiz overview video from, from Canvas. So let's go ahead and take a look at our steps here. We're gonna start by, um, and when you go back up to the top, you're gonna to see a tab that says questions, and then you're gonna be able to click new questions to start creating your questions for your quiz. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top. I didn't pick an, uh, a due date here. Let me do that real quick. Making everything due on the 31st. So I come back up to the top and I see my questions. So I'm gonna click that tab and I have new question, new question group, 
find questions. Remember, once you've created questions, you can always go back and just grab questions that you've created. So I'm gonna click new question. That's what I was thinking about earlier. The name of your questions is what students don't see. So that's what helps you find them when you want a naming convention. It's not the quiz, it's the names of your questions. It just all came back to me right now. So I'm gonna click to create a new question. This is what I was talking about. Come up with a naming convention for your questions that's gonna make sense to you because all of these questions get saved into a bank of questions that can be reusable, okay? So I, what was suggested was something like unit one and, and uh, you know, maybe even something related to the TEAK if you wanted to, or the objective, and then something that would just give you a clue as to what that question was about, the major topic. The, the trainer even suggested including what the answer was up here because the students do not see this question up here. Okay, so question one, uh, renewable. I'm not gonna call it question one, I'm gonna call it renewable resources. And then the answer will be, uh, let's do coal. Okay, so now I go in and select which type of question I want. Notice that there's multiple choice, true, false, that's easy. We also have some options for fill in the blank, fill in multiple blanks, multiple answers, multiple drop downs. Um, there's matching, numerical answers, formula questions, essay questions, file uploads, and text. So all of these, with the exception of essay and file upload, those are the only two. Everything else is can be automatically graded. Okay. So only essay and file are the ones that cannot be automatically graded by Canvas. So I'm going to leave for the first example, super duper easy, multiple choice. I have my question here, which is the rich content editor. So I can just type in my question, which of the following is not a renewable resource. Uh, we were talking about being able to read questions. So if I were gonna do that, I would say upload record media. So I can go ahead and record. What other options do I have? It's still the same as before. I could pop in a video right there and say, watch this video, here's my question. Or we were, we were really asking about audio earlier and I couldn't find the audio tab without having to do a, um, a video recording. Oh yeah, no, you do wanna to go to video and then at the bottom here, I just clicked webcam like that mm -hmm. to say no video. Oh, there you go, cool, cool. There's just my audio, yeah. Got it. So is there a way, because I know like from math, like with like graphs and all that, uh, is there a way to, um, it's like a question bank, like there is like with Edgephoria, back when there was Teach Resource as well, is there a question bank or anything that we can pick from or is it just we gotta pretty much snip images, cut them out and write out all the answer choices and everything as well? Um, I, I know that was one of the questions Tamara asked in our training last week is I believe that there's a way to import those. M my knowledge of it is at, at zero, but um, I think you can import items and then the district and departments are gonna be able to create and push those all a lot out as well. I, I don't want to promise anything, but I know that that's, that's possible. And um, Janet, is there any, anything else you can add to that? Because I know, yeah, you could snip a picture and insert it. And you do have the math equation option here if you want to be able to do some of these things. So the question is, is there a bank? 
Well, I think we're talking about like importing from outside sources in, right? Or or were you saying like a bank that exists within Canvas? Yeah, like, like I know when we used to use like Edge for you for like quizzes and tests, like there was like a bank where you can kind of decipher between questions on Teeks and say, okay, well, this is a quality question. Let me add this one. So it adds it automatically, uh, you know, uh, to the um, – to the to the quiz or the test, whereas like for example, with uh, sometimes Google Forms, and it seems like this is kind of the same line is that mm -hmm. uh, you have to use a snipping tool that SCIS uses to snip out the question mm -hmm. and just type in all the answers by hand yourself and then uh, pick the right answer. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, pretty much creating more work. But I was just kind of curious: it, it, is it going to get to where we can just import questions like we did on Edgeforia instead of having to? snip every question out because if you make like a like we have to make like a 20 question test mm -hmm. i mean that's 20 questions we got to snip out save each question separately and uh you know go from there so i was just curious about all that all that importing of questions into a bank and everything i'm asking the math director to see if he knows about any of he would he would know for rla it's different because we have passages and it's a whole another ball game as far as quizzes and things and yeah but okay. um i'll ask that question a really good question all right, thank you, appreciate it. Agreed. I was gonna say, I think, and it would be a good idea to talk to you, your um, your content people, the directors and the, and the coaches, because, well, there's gonna be a way for us to import items at the district level, at the department level, grade level, all, all of that. So I think there's ways for us to save time when it comes to creating things like this, yes. And also, we also use that feature uh, for science because they also had that available uh, for science. So you could look up um, previously uh, asked questions on STAR. Yep. And keep in mind too, as we build a quiz, these are going to be shareable in the commons, right? Like if I'm working with a co-teacher or a team across the district, when we make these things, we're going to be able to share these, these out. And once they, once you do that, it becomes a part of your bank that you can reuse these questions. So there's, there's a lot of way to work, ways to work smartly on this. For the answer choices, um, you can include your answer choice here, right? So I'll put coal as mine. No, I'm gonna put coal here because I wanna show you how to switch to the right one. Let's put solar here. Okay, so um, now if I wanted to, I could click this pencil over here and it's kind of hidden because it's way pushed off to the side over there. But if I click this, now the rich content editor comes up for that answer choice. So that's gonna give me all my editing abilities to be able to go in, add images, add recordings, do whatever I want to for that answer choice. I click done and I'm finished, okay? Now, solar is the incorrect answer, so I'm just gonna go down here and put the arrow onto coal because that is the correct answer. It's, that's, that's, how, that's all there is to it. This little box right here represents feedback that you wanna give. It comments if the student chooses this answer. What kind of comment do you wanna give back to the student if they choose that answer, okay? And the rich content editor comes up again for that. So there's a lot of options here. We've got solar, coal is the correct answer, uh, wind, and then hydro, hydro, what is it, hydro, electricity? So again, here's your options for correct answers, incorrect answers, how you wanna provide that feedback to your students, correct answer comments, same thing. So you could do it individually, case by case, or you can do it um, down here for the correct answer and then all of your incorrect answers. I forget what this one is, let, let me see. General answer comments. Okay, so just general feedback. Uh-oh. I, I, what did I do? I think I accidentally messed something up here. I apologize. Coal, solar, wind. Here's my question. I'm just putting makeup stuff so I can go through it real quick. Okay. Did I, yeah. Save, 
and publish when I'm finished. But of course, I would want to do more questions. So I can click new question right here. And I might have hit new question. That's probably what it was. There's my first question. And now I'm ready for my second one. I won't go into all of these here because you'll just kind of have to play with them. But there's more options. I, I was kind of trying some of these out the other day, like the matching and all of that. Um, I think I forgot to mention here's where you can include the points for each question. So pay attention to that. I forgot to do that for my question over here. I'm going to make that one worth two points. Uh, let me check the slides just to make sure that I covered everything I wanted to talk about. I talked about the question types. And we talked about the indicating the correct answer, incorrect answers. So now you get to go try that out. You're going to go to your question tab. We'd like for you to create three different types of questions. Remember, we talked about the importance of how you name your question because these are going to be able, you can build a test out of your questions later. You can build new quizzes out of them and all of that. And then of course, experiment with the feedback for how your students respond. Or um, So I'm gonna give you a little bit more time with this, because I know this is a big one. I'll add in four minutes for now, and then check in to see how it's going. Give it a shot now. Um, Ernest, I had a question. When we create questions, do they automatically go into the commons or are they just in our own login? When you, yeah, when you create your question, you have to specifically say, I'm sharing this out to the commons for it to show up there. Okay. Yeah. Then my next question is with all the different content areas, sharing questions or putting them in commons, is there a way, um, I can't remember, do you specify whether this is social studies, ELAR, even writing separately, you know, fine arts, painting, whatever. Is there a way to categorize those so that you don't have to go through every content to find one of yours? To find something for your content? Um, there's right. Once there's a way to tag things. There's a way okay. to, to say specific grade levels. I don't remember if there was a way to, to select the content, but I know that there is tags. And I would say that naming and tagging are going to be critical to be able to, I, as a department, if y'all can come to a consensus and say, this is how we're going to name questions. This is how we're going to name resources we share into the commons. Right. Even like ELAR or SS or SCI for science. And, you and there's more information coming too, because um, we're just still kind of, in the flow of everything and, and uh, figuring everything out. Because I know that inside of Commons, you can even create groups of you inside the Commons mm -hmm. to be able to share. So you could do something and say like, I'm a seventh grade ELAR teacher. There's a group of us inside of the Commons here and these are our resources. It can be done right. that as well. So that seems like it'd be helpful. Okay, thank you. Be right back, y'all.
10 seconds left. So Adam brought up a good point, making sure to click update question, otherwise your question may go away. And then yes, you can click save and publish at the end if you want to. Remember, save and publish is just going to <clears throat> save it and make it visible for the students. You can also just click save. That way, the work you've done is saved, but it's not going to be visible to the student. Okay. Do we have any common questions about what we've done? We, we went in, we made, we set up the details of the quiz. We went to questions and started putting in the questions. Make, I think we're doing okay. Sorry if I got direct questions because I haven't been doing a very good job of checking out those direct questions. Uh, yeah. Ernest, if we're going to add a picture, we have to upload the picture. We can't just copy and paste it in there, correct? Yeah, I was wondering about that. I think you can copy and paste. Did anybody try that? I think someone told me they did do a copy and paste, um, but I think that I think that it doesn't add the image to your course. And what it's doing is just, um, it's just linking to where that picture is on the internet. And in my mind, that's never been a safe way to, to I don't know, it's a math question. Let's see what comes up. I'll test that out real quick. So you're saying go to copy image, and then I go back into my quiz and paste. So it works, but like I said, I don't know if it actually uploads it into your course. And so you run a risk that if someone were to remove that image off that website, that your picture is gonna go away. Let me check the okay, code. Sounds good. Let me check the code. Because look, right now it's it's going to insider.com to go grab that picture. So yeah, it, it didn't actually, it's referencing that other image. Ernest? Yes. When I was when I was trying it, I was trying to do images like for simplification. So what I was doing was like highlighting the word and then linking it even like to in, an external image or whatever. And then for simplification, I actually highlighted the word and then just went to like a, 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 thesaurus, a thesaurus and then linked it to a page of synonyms just to try yeah. and add clarification. That'll work. Okay, let's keep on trucking. Real quick, I'm sorry, I have a question. We we just did a quiz, I, I published it, but when I go to student view, where am I gonna find that quiz? Oh, okay, let's talk about that. I think that might, so when you publish it, it exists, I don't know if I, did I save and publish this? I did not publish, let me publish mine. My terrible quiz with one question, because I totally messed it up, but I I have my quiz, and right now it exists inside of quizzes. It doesn't pop it up anywhere into your module, but I'm gonna go into modules. And thank you so much for asking this question because that's like a key part. I wanna add it into the module. So I'm gonna add this into unit one. I'm gonna click the plus sign. And this time I'm gonna select quiz. So there's my unnamed quiz, right? And I've just added it in now to, to unit one of week one, however you want to break these apart. Does that work? Yes, thank you. All right. So look, just to present that different workflow, I could have said quiz, new quiz, name it here. 
choose where it belongs and say add item. I mean, let me call it delete so I know to take it out. So there's there's the quiz. I just click on it and then I'm gonna see that same window again of being able to go in and edit it, choose the settings, add the questions, all of that. That's just a different route to go. So I can't, I'm not gonna go into detail about question groups at this point in time. I'm just gonna say briefly what it is, but question groups are kind of similar to an assignment group. Uh, the group gives you some flexibility with how you wanna display the questions, right? So let, let's, we saw an option to say, I wanna display the answer choices randomly, but if you want to display the questions randomly or to pick, like let's say you, you uh, build 10 questions for that quiz and you want to say, I only want the students to get five random questions out of those 10, that's what you would use a question group for, okay? Question group is different from question bank. The banks are what saves them and you can come back and reuse them. The group is used for randomizing how those questions are displayed. So once you've saved a quiz, you can preview it. Let me go back into my quiz. Let me go back into the modules or quizzes. And I think it was this one here. I'm gonna go into unnamed. I'm gonna go into, there's preview, in case I wanna preview. Okay. So I'm not gonna do that. Let me go back. And let me check the steps to make sure that I'm following these correctly. Okay. So after editing, after previewing, go to edit, go to questions, scroll to the bottom and say new question group. Okay, so I'm going into my quiz. I'm gonna go into edit. And then at the very, very bottom, you see your options for, whoops, where'd they go? Questions. Let's go to the bottom of questions. Still not showing the questions. Come on, questions. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. New question group. So I made group one. And imagine I had five questions right here that I've made for this quiz. <clears throat> here is where I can say, pick three out of those five questions, and then here's how many points they are worth per each of those questions. And all I have to do is I can just drag in, well, I should be able to, I'm gonna say create group. So now I can drag in my questions, just like that. So that's how you group your questions together. So think about this, you could create 10 questions and then create 10 more. You could put 10 into group one and say, I want you to grab five of these. Inside of group two, I can put a different set and say, pick five out of those. And it's gonna just randomly choose those questions. If you want to know more about question groups, I would encourage you to go back into the guides, take a look at what's in these, these slides and practice these. I think for now, I'm gonna just kind of skip this, you know, cause we spent some time talking about, um, we spent some time talking about rubrics today. So I wanna get y'all caught up a little bit and ensure that I spend some time talking about grading. <clears throat> okay. So I'm not gonna let y'all practice the, the question groups. I apologize for that. I do wanna spend some time talking about grading. So let's do that. Inside of Canvas, 
Canvas, you're going to have a grade book. This is where it stores all of your information about how your students are performing. It's can, it can measure in any way. So remember, I, I mentioned earlier that you can display points per assignment. You can have choose to have a, an assignment display a letter grade. So it's able to display different types of information. And then, of course, there's different colors there to represent, you know, maybe like missing assignment, you know, uh, different types of, of um, colors to represent different things. And then, of course, you can sort how you view all of those different uh, assignments within the, the, the grade book. So you have a, a global sorting, you have your student data, this is your assignment information, and then, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get into all of this right here. What can we do? You can view grades by grading periods. You can download assignment submissions. So the student work from the gradebook you can download. And you can even download them so that you can look at them offline if, if for whatever reason you, you don't have access to the internet, right? You can manually enter grades from here. You can view grade information from all your courses or sections. You can view the grade history, and you can also download and upload grades as a CSV file. There's way more things you can do, and Sonia had originally listed out like 20 things here, um, but it, it looked like a, a little bit overwhelming. So we just showed you a couple of the most important things that you can do from a grade book on this. Keep in mind that this video link is going to take you to more detailed information about the grade book. So come back and check that out if you want to see more information than what I'm providing right now within this session. On slide 34, we're going to talk about how do you access the gradebook. So from your course, you want to go to the course navigation, you want to click grades. So I'm going to follow that step right now and model that. I'm going to go to grades from within the course navigation. Okay, while it loads, I'm gonna go to the next slide here. And let's take a look at the menu options. Um, first of all, there is the option for learning mastery. I talked about this briefly over a, a little while ago. I don't have it turned on for this course, but I can choose to see how my students are performing based on the outcomes that I've attached to my assignments. That would, if I do turn that on, which in the presentation here says that you do from your course settings tab, that would be an option that I would see right here. I do have an option to say individual view. I looked at this yesterday. Um, maybe y'all can tell me why y'all might wanna use this, but what this does is it lets you pick a specific section of your course and from here you're you're going to select a specific student and then you're going to select a specific assignment and then it's going to give you the op like the grading the student information assignment information so it's a very like individualized look at the grade book I, my preference is just a personal preference, but I, I kind of like seeing the great book in, in the structure that I'm, I'm familiar with. So kind of seeing how the overview uh, works better for me, but maybe the individual view works better for you. You have a view button right here. So these are powerful ways to say, I want you to arrange the grade book by name, by due date, by points, lowest to highest, however you want to uh, arrange your view. You have a filter to be able to change this out by assignment groups or modules. There's a button for statuses. So statuses is how we can also change to see the view. Picking colors for all of these different, what is late gonna look like, what is missing gonna look like. So you can customize all of that. Inside of view, we also have notes and unpublished assignments selected. So maybe I don't want to see the unpublished ones. There may not be a purpose to see those yet. So I can take those unpublished ones out from my gradebook. Inside of actions, there's your ability to import and export your, your grades. On the very far right, I have a settings 
I'm gonna click on that. I have late policy. Do I want to automatically apply a grade for missing submissions? What is the grade for anything that's missing? Up to you to decide, right? Um, automatically apply deduction to late submissions. So late submission deduction percent, late submission deduction interval. So I could say, yes, let me do that. 5% per day that it's laid or 10% deduction per hour, lowest possible grade percent 50. This is pretty cool. Grade posting policy. Do you want to automatically post the grades to make them visible to students as soon as they're entered? Or do you want to manually post them? Grades are going to be hidden. Any grades that have already posted remain visible, but you choose when to post the grades for each of the assignment on each column in the grade book. I'm going to click cancel on these right now. And I'm going to double check that I've said everything I should be saying. So we talked about the grade book, altering that view. We talked about how you can alter the view. We talked about actions, being able to import and export. And we talked about, oh, we didn't go into the column arrangement settings. Okay, so I jumped ahead a little bit. Let's take a look at the column arrangement. From each assignment, you can go to the setting and you're gonna see sort by so you can sort by grade or status if they're missing or late. I really like that you could message students. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's an assignment. It looks like Belinda has turned it in. So what I can do is go to the settings of this particular assignment. There's my sort by high to low, low to high, missing, late, Message students who, I really love this. If they haven't submitted this yet, if it hasn't been graded, if they scored less than a certain grade, if they scored less than a 70, please go back and redo this assignment. Blah, 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 blah. Send message. Automatically, it, communication instantly went out to all of those students that scored less than a 70. What else is in there? Set a default grade. Maybe everybody's gonna say complete, boom. So now I just turned on, yes, everybody did that. Or yes, everybody made 100. However you're gonna do that. And then of course, hide grades and grade posting policy. Okay. Now it's time for you to give that shot, that uh, part of it, a, some practice. Go to your course, go to grades. I'd like for you to go into your grade book and then check out some of those options that we talked about as far as changing your view and filtering and play around with um, this setting right here. Just kind of taking a look at that. I'll give you all just- uh, Ernest? Yeah. Right quick, just sure. to clarify for people. How, what is the, what is the role of frontline versus grades in Canvas? Like how would you like put everything in its proper place for us? I would say that it's at this point, it's very similar to last year and that Google Classroom had a grade book, um, but ultimately grades went into front, uh, your, your official grade book. Mm -hmm. Which would no. be frontline for this year. For this year, it will be frontline. Um, so a little bad news and a little bit good news. The bad news is that our, this year it's going to be similar to last year as far as you have a grade book here and you have a grade book there. The good news is that this should function after this first year because we're rolling out frontline. Uh, the tech department is rolling out frontline. There's a lot of new parts to it and we're, we're waiting to see how that's going to function. But Canvas, after our first year, will function with Frontline. And so the grades from here will go directly into Frontline. That, and that's what I've been told. So 
It's almost like the canvas grade is like your actionable communication, working with students, like that part of it. And then frontline is like the official record keeping that we shoot off right. to right. everywhere. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Sure. I just started the timer now, so if there's more questions, I can answer those now. I'll check the chat and see what's going on. Uh, a follow-up question I have for, which I'll just explain, um, but parents will be able to have access to both, right? The grades on campus and the grades on front line? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. We, we don't have kids, right? Like y'all, y'all have a great book demo. I just have a test student. Is that what we're right. supposed to have for, right? Right, last night was uh, I think the first attempt at loading in all that data. So something must have happened to where they're, they're looking at that now. So yeah, right now you wouldn't see any students. <laughs> the only reason I have students is because I've gone in and added some teachers as students into my course. Okay, thank you. For now, if y'all want y'all want to practice around with this um, later on today when you're you're playing around with this, you may want to find a couple colleagues that are cool with being students in your course and add them in as a student. That way, they can go in, take a quiz, you know, try submitting one of your assignments just to see what happens. I think that'd be a good thing to do. The way you do that is through people. On the course, there's people, so you can add in a co-teacher or a student using their email address. Uh, for any questions about some of the other slides or the other days, that day one, two, three, four, check our website, saisd.net slash edtech. Um, the slides are there and the videos are there. All right. We're closing in on the end here. So come back into the Zoom. Come back into the Zoom room. So we're going to look again at student data. <clears throat> we do have context cards turned on, so I want to give you a sneak peek. You may not be able to use this functionality just yet, because as we were talking about, uh, you do not have your students just yet. Coming soon. So. Uh, Context card, basically, in, from your grade book, you're gonna click on one of these students, and this, this pops up right over here on the right-hand side. So that is the, the, the context card. In the grades page, you can see how a student views their grades in the course. Students can view the name of the assignment, the due date, the assignment status, the score, or the assignment submission type. They see the total number of points for the assignment and then any comments and rubrics, okay? You get to see kind of like what their view. If allowed, a student can view distribution graphs and the assignment scoring details as well as his or her total grade and assignment groups in the course. We did, let's, let's go ahead and model that real quick. I'm gonna show that just to 
I'll show what that looks like. So I'm in my grade book. Let's see, Miss Abundi's here. And here's grades and also new anal analytics. I would encourage you to check that out. I don't know that we get into that today. I don't, I don't, I don't think we do, but check it out. Here's your grades. And then that view that we were talking about how student, uh, from a student perspective. Assignments, due dates, what is the status, what is their score, out of how many points, all of that there, okay? And then finally, and I, this is where I jumped ahead, go into the settings, far right, and you have your late policy and grade posting policy. Did y'all have a chance to play with that in that last break? That was the part I jumped ahead on. Can you put a some a yes in the chat if you if you did get a chance to go into the settings or if I should show that part again? You want to see it again real quick? I'll just go real quick and show. Grades. It's, it's a little hidden away because it's it's pushed off to the right over there, but your settings for your grade book. Template assignment. So I'm gonna click my settings. Your late policy automatically apply a grade for any missing submissions. Automatically, uh, this what is your late policy that affects grades either by day or by hour? And then grade posting policy. How do you want the grades to show up? Do they just automatically pop up or do you want to release those later? Manually. Okay. And let's see where else we are at. I, this was time for you to go in and practice those. I'm going to go into the next part just to make sure I get to cover everything. Speed grader and annotation. Cool. We covered that already. We covered that already. This is just a, I think this is when we were going to go back and talk about it a little bit more. But just remember, speed grader is going to make it easy for you to go in and mark up assignments and provide feedback. Uh, so it's saying here you can access SpeedGrader through assignments, quizzes, um, discussions, the grade book. Click here for some more information. Let's take a look at this, this next slide right here. The speed, SpeedGrader sidebar provides all submission details. So let's see if I can do that from the grade book. Here, and then SpeedGrader pops up. So there it is. And y'all kind of got a preview of that earlier, so I won't go into it right now. Speed grader, just remember there was a way for me to provide comments, annotate, draw on top. Um, this, and then of course, I didn't have a rubric attached to this assignment here, but this is where I would bring in my rubric. This is where I could go back and add an individual comments for my students and all of that. Okay. Boom. There would be some time to go practice that normally, but I'm gonna stop here and see what kind of questions we have. Is there anything you want me to try to review from today? We talked about a big chunk of stuff, right? We talked about making a rubric. We talked about bringing in your outcomes. We learned how to attach outcomes to rubrics. We learned how to make quizzes. And we learned the speed grader, providing some feedback to our students. We did a lot. Can you attach outcomes to assignments?
Hmm. Well, I know that you can attach the outcome to the rubric, which gets attached to the assignment. So that's what I'm thinking, but I don't know exactly. I'm, I'm glad I got, we got caught up together. All right, y'all, well, I'm gonna say that based off of no questions on anything that it probably sank in, but y'all are feeling like you need to get in there and, and play around with it some more. So have at it, best of luck. Feel free to come by our office hours again today at three. And then I will stick on right now in case you'll have so clear as mud. Perfect. Thank you all again. I, I have a quick question. On my, on my Hang on. Do, do I erase all of the assignments that are there? Like, you know, like the ones that were, there was a bunch of engage and experiments. I'm a math teacher. Do I erase everything so that way I start off clean? Your sandbox, you can, you can, you can take care of the sandbox however you like. That's your space to, to do as you like. Um, when we designed the template, and by the way, with the templates, uh, it's come from Patty not to alter the templates, y'all, that, that homepage. And the main okay. reason, yeah, I sent an email about that yesterday. Um, so for now, that, that's just at the beginning of this school year to ensure that our students and families have the best uniform experience since Canvas is brand new. Just keep it the way it is. And I, I know that's hard because I'm the type of person that wants to customize everything and individualize it. But let's, let's go with that to start. And then once everybody gets used to things, we can customize. But the modules, yes. I would imagine you're gonna go along with your department on how y'all wanna do the modules, but the ones we put in there into the template were just examples of like how it might look like as a weekly, how it might look like as a unit. So you can go delete all that if you want. Yeah. Okay. Because because whenever I was trying to do like the assignment weights, like the group weight or something, it had like assignment, assignment, then test. And you know how you usually just have assignments and quizzes. So then I would just group things in my modules, right? I wouldn't do like assignments, unit one, assignments, unit two. Like I, I wouldn't do all those groups under assignments since I'm doing it in the modules already, right? Yeah. The, the What happened was, your sandbox came in with one uh, assignment group by default, which was called assignments. And then you went in and imported our template, which had assignments and quizzes. So then it duplicated assignments. So yeah, you, you can go into there and, and I think we all kind of said the best would be one assignment, one assessment. Okay, okay, I because I, there were so many groups of assignments. I'll make sure that I only have one group of assignments and one group of assessments. Okay, yeah. Thank these you. Are all, yeah, these are all things that just happened because we didn't know that would happen. I didn't know I was going to bring in another assignment group like that. Okay, thank you. Ernest, uh, in the chat, uh, some of us had put, put uh, not sure about 11 o'clock. Are we supposed to come back on in another Zoom? That was for uh, tomorrow, I thought. For 11 o'clock tomorrow? The slide that I showed, I believe that was about tomorrow. Okay. Let me, I'll go back. Let now. me go check because I have uh, the other slide. This is where I inserted it. Okay. Let me let me just make okay. sure I'm, I'm correct. They okay. Said. Now I don't know where I put it. <laughs> it was an email you sent us. Oh really? Uh, that was yesterday. I thought. Oh, was it the yesterday? It was yesterday. Oh. But that was the evening. The message you sent was the evening classes. Oh, right. Yeah. This is the, what I thought you were talking about, that tomorrow from 8 to 10.30, there was going to be content development. And then from 11 to 1, just take a look in your email for more information about that. Okay. Got it. it. This, 
I think that's what I, it was. Yeah, it must have been. Okay. Ernest, but you haven't sent that email, have you? For the 11 to 1, uh, it's going to be coming from Diane, probably. Okay. All right. Okay. I just misunderstood. Thank you. No problem. Mr. Gonzalez, I got kind of cut off. I just wanted to ask a quick question. Um, when I'm doing the, I went through all of the checking the grades and being able to put the students' names and all that. But when I'm uh, um, a quiz, at the very bottom it says due and then available. I got a little, um, like a little box that says unlocked date cannot be after locked date. Say the last part again, cannot, what was it, the last part? So the due date is July the 22nd, 2011 at four o'clock. Oh, that's next to you too. Okay. So when I wanna put in, when they, they, it's visible for them to see, it says unlocked date cannot be after lock date. Unlock cannot be after lock date. Right. Let me go into my assignments so I can see the same thing as you. Okay. You're on an assignment, not a quiz, right? It's a quiz, sir. Oh, it's you a were quiz. teaching us how to do the quizzes. Okay. So okay. once I hit the quizzes. Oh my God, the cat got outside and is like <laughs> banging on the door to come in. Um, so then I create like you asked me. I'm gonna go into edit. Okay. And so you walk me through. Tell me to what to put inside of this section down here. So I put the same thing as you. You said Jul July twenty second on the due date, right? Yes, that's correct. But today is the twenty third. The the computer is telling me that it's it's like. I don't know if it's off or what, but on the 23rd on mine in July, it's on a Saturday. It says 2020? <laughs> yeah, it says 2020 at the top. In July 2020, and it's saying the days are off. Yep. Okay. Uh, that is a weird problem. I would email Kelly about that because I don't even know where to begin with that. And even if, hold on. The only thing I can guess is maybe there's some kind of weird setting to say that this course is available. Did you bring in anybody's content randomly from Commons? No, no. It was all just the districts that the, I just made a copy of whatever you had because I was working on the syllabus yesterday and, uh -huh. and I was trying to create something to get to this point because I knew we were doing grades today. And created a little assignment and all that. So and, uh, I'll just show you how it works for me. I'm going to say that the due date is the 20, let's say the 29th. The let's say Friday the 24th. Okay, so On Friday, That's Friday the 24th is when it's due. Okay. And then I want to make it available from today until Sunday. And then that's it. That's it. Yeah. You can turn it in any time in between the 23rd and the 26th, but technically it's due the 24th. So if you turn it in on the 25th and 26th, that's going to be late, right. but you still have until then to do it. So then after, at this point, then you just save it. Yes. And once you save it, just that one step of how to create the actual quiz, sir. Just that step from here to create the quiz. Oh, make sure you go to questions. Got it. That's what I needed to do. Okay, that's what I didn't see. You've answered my question, sir. Thank you so very much. And I'm looking to see why it's saying 2012 and it's on a Saturday. <laughs> I'll figure it out. You went into Thank the classroom. So that's just weird. Yeah, it could be some kind of weird course setting to say like. That's either, that or I, either that or I hit something on the top. Maybe. Yeah, I would just check settings. I've seen that there's a way for you to say my course takes place from this time to this time. So somehow maybe you, you set your course into the past and you're making a due date that's in the future. I don't know. 
I'm not Sounds sure. Sounds like a plan. You've been a great help. Thank you so much. You see that in settings that says, here's when my class starts, here's when it ends. Just double check that. Maybe, maybe it's some kind of weird time zone thing. Uh, one of these, okay. that's my guess. Uh, I'll go ahead and check that, sir. Thank you so much. We have, uh, you were talking about that we were going to have um, the same home page. So am I importing from the commons the entire 6 or 12 uh, template, or is there a way just to bring in the home page? Um, right now, it's only the course that's in the commons. Let me ask uh, Becky and see if maybe what she wants to do instead is um, I can design it. I can possibly update it in a way to where it shows. Um, did I go into the right one? Yeah, to show just the front page here. I mean, I could probably also just share this page out and you'd have to go in and manually set it to be your home page. Right. Okay. I was just wondering to make sure that there was not enough, like an easier way of doing it. We, the thing is we created all of these pages as well. So if you did, if I, if it was that I just exported this as a page and that's it, then these would not work because these pages wouldn't have been brought in either. Right. So I think what you're saying is you really don't want to see the mess of our modules probably, right? Well, I mean, we're going to go ahead and be doing, um, like right now in the sandbox, it doesn't really matter, right? Because we're just playing around with it. Um, but when we go ahead and make our own courses, you know, am I going to go ahead and be able to go ahead and just import that one, just the home, just that one page into the, into my brand new courses? I see. Yeah, I'll find I'll out maybe that's something uh, she wants us to put in there. I'll, I'll have to ask. Okay. I kind of think I already know what the answer is, but all right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. She might say, cool. We're working on one more right now for, uh, to, to make bilingual options of this. Awesome. Okay. Just checking. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yep. Mr. Gonzalez. Yes. On the template download for the, um, the one that you have displayed here, when you bring it in from the comments, for some reason, the SASD logo doesn't appear. It gives you like the link instead of the actual image. Can that be corrected? I would say um, hang tight. I think what happens when you bring in a course, it, it doesn't happen instantaneously. Somebody else mentioned this. So I think what happens is it's kind of slowly bringing over the images into your canvas. And I think probably that, that logo just hasn't copied over yet. So it's trying to display it, but doesn't know that it's there yet. So uh, when did you import it? Yesterday. Oh, shoot. OK. Um, it was yesterday. That's kind of a long time. Um, I mean, if you want to, I can show you how to, to go in there and, and, and add it. I don't know why it's not displaying. And you sign. <laughs> so edits how you can to mess with any page you just have to go out save that logo whenever i go look for it i just type in saisd white logo um so i click in right there put in the image upload an image and then i go grab the picture I have it saved on my computer somewhere, but there it is. There's the SAISD white one. It's probably going to come in super giant. Submit. Just in case it's driving you nuts and it's not up fixing. But yeah, you can just click it and just. Whoosh. Perfect. And you did that search for the image on Google or was that through? Comments? Yeah, I just looked for it on Google. Okay, thank you.
Ms. Clarice, did you ask your question? I know you had a question, you were hanging on. Uh, it was more related to the curriculum. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm real TEKS based and this system is really cool and there's a lot of bells and whistles, but when it comes down to TEKS for science, there's nothing there. So I think I'll just wait and see what they show for curriculum. Um, I want to hit the ground running, you know, especially with, I mean, you're science, so, you know, 30, 35, 40% of the star test comes from sixth and seventh grade. So everything to me has to be TEKS related. So I'm just trying to see if I have to, I mean, I'll do whatever I have to do, but I want to kind of start creating now. I don't want to wait. Um, and I was hoping that we could somehow use lead forward and transfer our data in there from lead forward. That's just the quickest place that I can see the majority of TEKS collected where they have separated, you know, eight, eight, 11, A, B, C, D, E. And we can just grab it and go from there. What do you think? Well, um, well I guess what I'm wondering is uh, I need some clarification. Are you, are you talking about like, specific assignments and quizzes? Well, every single thing that I do. At the beginning of the year, I do a pre-assessment. I do a middle of the year. I do an end of the year. So like this past year, my kids were at projected 85% on STAR, 20 plus percent in MASTER. And it's all because it's very TEKS related and they own their data. They analyze their data. They know what the TEKS are. They know what it looks like. Um, but this... I would have to, when we had um, our old grading system, when you would take a test, you would receive the star data back. I mean, I can load the tests with my readiness and supporting standards. I get that. I can do all that. I just kind of need to see what the district is doing so that I can do what I need to do to make sure I have my roadmap ready for my kids to be ready for high school and beyond. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I would, um, uh, my recommendation would be to send an email to Angela and to Tamara and kind of like explain what you had access to last year. Oh, include Kelly as well. I'll put all of those email addresses. Do you have those? Yeah, yeah. And, okay. and um, uh, Webb is coming back. And she'll be with science, so she knows how I work because we've worked together. Okay. So I'm sure they're doing something because our science department is all that and then some. So if there's something we can do to Canvas to, to add in the functionality that you need. That's what I'm saying. I would when like we do our tests in, in the bank area, what I was going to do is I was going to go in, separate the teaks from release stars, and actually load my own so that I can create my tests. I was gonna do whatever I have to do since we have these few weeks before school starts and I can get the pre-assessment done. And that might be something y'all do tomorrow since y'all are working with the, the content folks right. tomorrow. They, they, they might be looking at that. Right, but I, I don't wanna like wait. I, I do wanna wait, like it's just a day waiting, but I, if I have to do this, I'll do whatever I have to do to make sure that my kids have the data so they can see their growth, their strengths, their weaknesses. Right. Gotcha. And I was Clarice. just trying to pick your brain and see which way you thought I should go. Clarice, can I add something real quick? I have some other friends of mine that are in different Zoom sessions. And I think it just kind of depends on um, whether they have any of the department people in there. Because for example, there's a, a Zoom session with some math department people in there and they've already divvied up the standards and like they're pulling all that data in from Leaport, all those questions and then posting it to common. Like they're already going through that so that you don't have to do it all yourself. So I'm hoping that tomorrow we could start, I mean, I'm math and you're science, but there's a bunch of us in here. So if we could divvy up like this person's going to do sixth grade and they're doing these and then sharing it into comments so that we all have the bank that we can access because it doesn't make sense for each of us to do it individually it would take forever right but hey 
We move mountains. That's what we do. <laughs> Mr. Gonzalez, I have a question about uh, beginning of the year testing for ELR for reading. Um, I know we we have uh, like maps testing three three times in the year. Um, how how is that going to work? I mean, I know that uh, I know that the master teacher um, criteria is based on student performance and stuff, and that's one of the ways that they gauge. And so, I guess beginning of the year data kind of helps, you know, um, help ascertain whether or not the master teacher met her goal or not. So, like for maps testing beginning of the year, are we still doing maps testing? It was all on computer last year. Um, I don't remember. Uh, maybe that was I don't remember if I saw that included in the, <clears throat> in the guides yet. Um, has anybody seen anything in, about map testing in the guides the, for this year, the rollout? Um, they kind of gauged it as a, a um, you know, as a way of determining probable uh, yeah. passing rates or whatever. I, I, I would, if, if, it's, if it's not included in the guides yet, I would just um, expect to see some more information coming from the testing department. Okay. And if, if you don't mind tomorrow, I think I might just put it on there for Ms. Hester since she's the reading person in our group sure yeah you know yeah i think that's i think that's going to come from research and evaluation okay thank you I right. some... quick question how sure. do you you know on that slide you gave us that with your name for like the background was like the school logo how can we go and find like or get an image of our own logo like from our own school your campus Mm -hmm. I stole it from the campus websites. Okay. <laughs> so you just, just like copied and pasted it straight copied off. Copied and pasted it? Okay. That's all I, I was just making sure. Perfect. Thank I you. Do, I do have a, a, a meeting at 11 that's going to be on this Zoom. Um, okay. So I, I'll still answer more questions until that meeting, but. No, that was my last question. I I'm out. I'll pop in at any point soon just to give you all a heads up. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez, I have one other question. Okay. Um, from my campus, we have several master teachers and we had a meeting yesterday trying to start talking about how we want to roll this out at the campus level for the students, like the training for the students. And we kind of thought it would be a good idea to kind of come up with a, uh, a list of the components that the students are going to have to be taught and then what order to do that in and then maybe break it up by department so it's not overwhelming. I just want to make sure that if we start that work, that like the first week of school, we're not going to get something from SAISD saying, here, this is what we want you to teach the students, because then it's like we're doing work for nothing. So is that coming, or are you all still in the process of just trying to change train teachers, so it's going to be left to campus and staff to train students? It's something we've been discussing and I'll bring that up again today in our debrief. Um, that way we can try to have an answer to you as soon as possible. I know that it's gonna be smarter for us to, and I say us in the sense that it may include master teachers a little bit too, because we've been talking about the idea of trying to get some of those screencastifies ma made, like if we can work on it together, and put that stuff together for the district, then that would be good. Um, our bandwidth is definitely running low, so I don't know how much we can try to do, but we, let me bring it up and see if we can come up with a plan to, to um, put that stuff together for, for all of us. Because I mean- We're gonna need it in, in simple, simple videos, you know, um, English and Spanish. We're gonna need a lot of work to be done. We're gonna need help to, to do it. And that's, it's a fast turnaround. I mean, if y'all do it, then it becomes consistent across the district. But if the campuses do it, then it's more like what the campus needs to be done. So I just don't wanna, we brought it up yesterday. We were gonna present it to our principal at our meeting on Monday. 
mm -hmm. as kind of an idea for us to run with mm -hmm. um, so that we are starting to develop that and figure out what would be the best way to introduce it to the kids because it's going to take you know a good week or two to get them familiar with the different components that they're going to be accessing on like a daily yeah. basis. Yeah, and I know that uh, I know conversations have already started or will be starting soon with other or uh, departments like uh, family engagement, you know, what, what role will they play in helping us roll that out to parents? Um, so yeah, it, we're definitely talking about it. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer at this point, but I'd like to get you one as soon as possible. That way you can avoid having to, to recreate anything and, and create something that's more consistent for everybody. Okay, thank you. See you tomorrow. All right. Mm-hmm.